So we have just entered the Christmas season, and with a million videos like this one, I'm going to make another. Is it going to be better or more useful? You'll have to watch and find out. This is going to be a little more in-depth in explanations of some of these gifts, so there will be timestamps and hopefully chapters available for you to skip around if you want. This also might be kind of a long video, so get your cocoa, I'll get my cola, and we'll get started. One thing that I'd like to remind our gifters of is don't buy someone the same thing every year. Of course, there can be some exceptions, but if you want to wow, you have to keep your gift E guessing and, of course, excited. Did you know that wow upside down is mom? Food for thought. <laughs> Another thing I have to annoy you with is if you are interested in any of the products mentioned in this video, there are Amazon affiliate links in the description below. If you consider purchasing any of these products, please consider using one of the links and help me out. Thank you. Now, on to the video. Now, some guitarists can be hard to shop for, depending on their experience level and what they already own. Now, pretty much the number one rule is to not buy your guitarist guitar lessons unless they specifically talk about wanting them. You have to be careful in this area because sometimes this gift, while useful, can oftentimes be seen as an insult as well as many aspects of guitar can be learned online, but sometimes it does help to have guidance when your guitarist gets a little stuck. Personally, I'm ready for some lessons in certain areas that I'm having trouble progressing in. With that being said, for most of these items, you have to know your guitarist. Sometimes what they like, and sometimes what they already have. Let's get into some suggestions. For the forgetful or clumsy guitar players, extras are always good course unless they were self-aware enough to already prepare. Extras are always good in general though. Our first items are clip-on tuners. There are many brands making these and even some of the most careful guitarists can lose these one way or another. Personally I have one, there are two in the house, and the other is my father's. When I misplace mine it's a real frustration, so having three or more can be really beneficial. Some good brands to get are snark tuners, they are known for their tuners, so just about any of their models are a good option. Another brand I personally use is Diodario's tuners. Their basic model has a bright screen, tunes fast and accurately, except for when the battery starts to die. Mine has lasted at least two years if not longer, and the battery is just now causing the display to fade, but it still tunes well. They also come in many fun colored borders, and when you start buying from Diodario and their affiliated companies like Evans and Promark for drummers, you can start collecting player circle points. This is a rewards point system that you can redeem for discounts, contests, and if you get enough, even a free product. Unfortunately, their basic tuner model doesn't look like it comes with a rewards code. Sorry. This basic tuner is $15. Guitar picks are always good too, but this can be a gray area for some guitarists. They may have found a brand that they already like, so then you have to find the right series of pick and thickness. And sometimes there are series of picks that are similar but different to each other. Typically if you get the right thickness though, the gift will be appreciated. If your guitarist is open to experimentation, you can get your guitarist a variety pack of picks. Dunlop makes great packs for different guitarists. They have an acoustic pack, an electric pack, a light and medium pack, and a medium and heavy pack. Light picks are good for strumming so they're good for acoustic songs or songs with a lot of chords. Those are the ones that have the multiple strings and you do the full motion. Medium picks are good for all around and are the most common thickness used to get a good balance. And heavy picks are good for control, so they're usually used for fast picking of single strings for cool solos and stuff like that. All the packs I mentioned cost $8. Continuing our pick talk, if your guitarist likes Fender guitars like Stratocasters, Telecasters, Jazz Masters, Acoustasonics, etc., a few other models that are in there, then your player might like this variety pack offering from Fender. They have various quantities of light, medium, and heavy picks, and they all look really cool and unique. These can cost from $13 to $25, but you do get more picks in these packs than other typical packs. Another option of packs is the Diodario packs. These only come in medium and heavy packs, but do come with a few different styles of picks. However, I would be careful or honestly avoid this listing. It looks like the medium option is currently a different heavy pack, and again, I don't think they put rewards codes in these, unfortunately. Both options cost $5. If you know what thickness picks your guitarist likes and they always seem to lose the picks, maybe get them some glow-in-the-dark options. Bender, Diodario, and Ernie Ball 
all make medium options in this category. For those who don't know, these are some of the biggest names in guitar brands and accessories. The Fender option is more expensive, but you get 12 in a pack, and it's a thickness variety pack. These options can range from 5 to $9. Again, if you know the thickness your guitarist likes and they have a hard time with picks falling out of their hand while strumming or playing, then possibly get them some grippy picks. I personally love grippy picks because some people I know get sweaty hands. When I say grippy picks, I mean picks with added material to give them a little more stick for your fingers while playing. Some of my favorite options are Ibanez Wizard picks. These come in five possible different colors and three different thicknesses. There are two different listings. I don't know if the red and white versions are signatures or something, but they seem to be much more expensive. Additionally, when I use these, the sandpaper grip wore off somewhat fast, but that was probably because I have kind of toxic hands. <laughs> these can cost from five to fifteen dollars. A brand that I really like is Snarling Dog Brain Picks. They come in various thicknesses and colors to match the thicknesses. They also come in little tins, which are kind of neat. But the main attraction to these are the plastic bump grips. They're effective and won't wear down, though the in-between of the bumps can get pretty disgusting with use and age. Personally, I use the .73 red picks. That's pretty much the average medium thickness. Now, I just listed a couple that I like personally, but I can't mention every brand and type that makes grip picks. There's also some attachments that your guitarist can apply to their picks, made by quite a few different brands, though I've never used any of them, so I don't know how well they work or stay on the picks. So I have added a general link to get you started if you want to do a general search for alternatives. Okay, we've talked enough about picks, but let's stay on the extras topic. Now I can suggest strings, but that can also be a tricky area, especially for more experienced players. More experienced players probably have a preference of brand, style, and thickness, much like picks. String thickness has to do with what tuning they play in, which I understand for some shoppers may be beyond their understanding, especially if you can't go up and just simply ask what tunings your player plays in. Strings can affect the sound of a guitar depending on the style of them, but this effect is more amplified with acoustic guitars. So unless you know the exact kind and size your player likes, I would probably steer clear of acoustic strings. If your player plays electric guitars, especially with distortion or rock tones, then I'll try and make some suggestions because it doesn't make as big of a difference. Before we go into strings, you have to find out what tuning they're playing in. So other than asking them what tuning they're playing in or should be playing in, what you can do is look up the guitar tabs if you want to surprise them. The two best resource sites for me have been Songster and Ultimate Guitar Tabs. To be able to find the tuning, you have to know what songs your player is playing. After that, Look up the song, and hopefully it's not something too awful weird, so it will be tabbed. At the beginning of the tablature, it should show the letter tuning of each string. So I'm going to show you how to try and look up guitar tabs on Ultimate Guitar Tab, but it can be kind of unpredictable because they are made and tabbed by the community, at least the free versions are. So that means that they're also formatted by the community. So you open your thing. Mine's already popped up. Then you go to Ultimate Guitar website. The main page looks like this. This is where you want to search. I already looked it up, but we're going to look it up again. So you can look it up by, by title, it would be easier. You can do band as well. If I could spell it, it'd help too. There. So now here's where it can get a little confusing is that there are types where it shows chords rather than tabs. Typically tab is what you want because that'll show the individual numbers and stuff rather than just chords. And oftentimes when people do just the chords, it is incorrect or not close enough, really. I don't know why people like that kind of stuff. The only time it really works is if the entire song is made of chords, but usually it's not. Like the intro. But this is just the intro. Either way, it will show the tuning up here for this version. There's also this... Uh, Let's do this, Enter Sandman, should be a full version, and it has the same thing. So maybe they changed it so that's easily, more easily formatted. It also has it here, but up here it should say the tuning. So if I say a shortened version of tuning, like Drop D or Standard, to save time in the video, please look up the tunings to see if they match what is shown in the tablature.
Also, don't worry if the higher numbers or the thinner strings don't match exactly in terms of the gauge of the string. If they're a size or two off, it should be okay. Typically, the lower numbers or the thicker strings are the important ones when using lower tunings. Standard tuning, drop D, or even half-step down tuning for electric guitars today typically use 10 to 46 packs. That is a regular slinky pack from Ernie Ball, which is one of the most infamous string brands because they were one of the first around and typically one of the most affordable. A pack of these will currently cost $7, though you can get a bit of a discount if you buy packs of packs. A three pack costs $17, which per pack means $5.66. I know I've mentioned Diodario a lot, but this is what they're actually known for, their strings. They make a lot of strings, so there can be a lot of confusion in the differences. I have two basic recommendations. With the standard tuning, we will still have the same size 10 to 46, but there are two styles depending on the price you are willing to pay. XL Nickel Strings are their affordable line costing $5 a pack. If you buy the more expensive version though, it's kind of worth it because they will last longer. These are the XT line of strings. These are considered the more versatile sounding strings while having some of the longest lasting lifespan. These packs cost a whopping $13 per pack. And like mentioned earlier, if you buy Diodario, you can get rewards points. And as far as I know, all of their strings, including the affordable ones, get you rewards points. I know the ones mentioned here do. Now, if your player is playing in drop tunings, which means tunings below average tones, then they will start to need thicker strings. Thicker strings stay tighter at looser or lower tunings. But since they're tighter, they can snap before getting to standard tuning. So again, you have to be careful. Don't buy these for the wrong purpose. Another thing to be aware of is sometimes baritone guitars use some of the same gauges that normal guitars can. I may be wrong, but baritone strings are longer and usually more expensive. So try not to buy these for a normal guitar. But at the same time, try to be aware if your guitar player's guitar style is a baritone. But these are semi-uncommon. If your guitarist plays in drop C, they will need at least 11 to 52s, but I personally prefer 12 to 56. When going to 12 gauge strings and above, you may need to substitute for different styles of strings. In this case, for the XT style, we will need to change them to NYXLs. These are both by Diodario still. The NYXLs are brighter strings, but that's good for a few reasons with the lower tunings, but I won't bore you with that. The thicker the strings, typically the more expensive, though some do stay the same. Anything drop B, or god forbid lower than that, you should get the previously mentioned set of 12s, but typically it's a good idea to move up to a set of 13s. 13s can be hard to find sometimes, so you or your player may need to be flexible on what brand or style of string they want. 13 packs typically come in 13 to 56. For this thickness, I found some Ernie Balls, but they are considered custom, so they are ex pretty expensive. There are some Nickel Diodarios that are considered medium jazz, but will work for any playing and cost $7. And for the fancier Diodarios, we have the NYXLs for 14 Alright, finally we have all the string stuff out of the way. Strings are great, but they are somewhat of a boring subject. So let's move on to capos. It's also good to have two or three of these around, especially if your player is a gigging musician who actually goes out and plays. They can have one at home, a spare, and one in their guitar case. Now there are a lot of practical options, but for your average player or gigging mu musician, this multi-tool 4-in-1 capo can be useful to anyone who uses a capo. Or for a more simple option, we have a simple capo with a pick slot in the top. In the pictures, they show a couple picks in the slot, but I don't know how well that'll actually work. Okay, so let's say you have a player who has a capo already and doesn't think they need another one. Well, that's where you throw some sauce on it. For our rugged carpenter, wood-loving, or simply acoustic players, we have a capo with a nice wood design over it. This one comes in a two-pack and has a pick holder as well. We have many more options to go through, so we're not going to go in-depth about all of them. For the players who like more simple designs, but still like some flash, we have these cool color or two-tone capos. No frills, just function, and a little form. Now we have a classic design for people who want a little more design on their capo. 
the skull and bone capo. Now this design I believe you have to tighten down instead of completely relying on the spring action like most models. But that isn't a huge hassle, it still looks good and comes in a few different colors. Now another design I've seen for a while is the shark capo. This one is an average capo with the spring action and also comes in a few different colors. I'm kind of partial to the iridescent one myself. The last one I found that's pretty unique is the gator capo. This one is a lot like the last, just shaped like an alligator or crocodile. I don't know the difference visually. This listing also has some other options like a bronze skull and bone pirate looking design, but most of them are the gators. So next we have a non-glamorous guitar accessory. These are strap locks, or at least that's what they call them. These are little foam rings or sometimes mechanisms that hopefully block your guitar strap from slipping off of the guitar button. These can be particularly useful if your player has an old kind of ratty guitar strap but they refuse to give it up. So first we have the basic design by Ernie Ball. These are little rubber rings that provide basic protection and come in many color options. These cost six dollars. Now we have a fancier and possibly more secure option from Diodario. They call these dual lock strap locks and appear to grip on the guitar strap button from two points to try and prevent any type of slippage. And these cost $3.50. Now let's talk about some stuff that every guitar player needs but doesn't necessarily know how to use. These are for the players that like to tinker and maintain things. These are tools and kits of tools. Let's start with the kits. First we have the Ernie Ball Musician's Toolkit. Now while this kit does have some good looking tools and consumables, I wasn't impressed with the selection and the amount you could actually do with this kit, especially for $40. So I found this kit with one of those weirder names from a foreign country. This is the Mifog 45 piece guitar kit. It has more tools and will allow your player to do more repairs across the guitar as well as it costs only $36 compared to the $40. Keep in mind that your player can do damage to their guitar and they need to learn how to properly use these tools before using them. Another thing to keep in mind is that these may not be able to fit in a stocking. Now let's talk about some good individual tools to have. Some great tools to keep around when you don't want to have a full on toolkit are some multi tools. So first up is the Fender Guitar and Bass Multi Tool. This has many basic tools that a guitarist or even a bassist may need for quick adjustments or general maintenance. This one costs $25. There is a very similar model made by Ibanez, and to be fair, it does look a little better built. Fender's appears to have a plastic body and Ibanez's is metal. It also comes in red or black and is currently on sale for $19 instead of $25. Next we have a tool for the gigging musician, or someone who's just simply rough on their strings. We have the all-in-one Diodario String Tool. That's not the official name, but it might as well be. It has all the tools to make a swift string change, which a broken string will always send a show or a practice session alike into a screeching halt. This can be bought for $11. Oh, and it also comes in black or white handles. Lastly, we have an interesting screwdriver made by a brand called Music Nomad. I've never heard of this brand, but this tool would have been going on my list if my family didn't do Christmas lists so early. They call it the Octopus 8-in-1 Tech Tool. To be fair, its features are similar to the other tools, but it has more hex holes and ends for tightening stuff up that can commonly get loose. The other tools don't really have that. So this is a great option for the guitar player that doesn't tinker but doesn't need a tool from time to time. This simple tool costs $14. So, passing the multi-tools, we have actual individual tools for specific uses. Some of these are more useful than others, but let's talk about them anyway. A great thing to have around for anyone who does maintenance or work on their guitar is a neck cradle. This properly supports the guitar by the neck, so when the headstock on the guitar is a bent model, there's no damage from the headstock resting on the table or anything like that. There are many options, but I would pick one similar to the one I linked below. One with padding will prevent possible wear and damage on the guitar neck, and if you turn this one sideways, it can work on electric or acoustic guitars. One thing to note about this listing is that on the main picture, it shows the cradle coming with some other stuff. However, the description says what's included in the box is only the cradle and no accessories. So you may get some extra stuff, but probably not. And again, this may be a little big for a stocking. This useful block costs a mere $16. 
Another thing that definitely won't fit in a stocking, but would go perfect with the neck cradle, is a work mat. There are a few mats made specifically for the guitar, covering the entire area that a guitar would be. But in reality, most times you just need to protect the part of the guitar body that would be touching the table. All you really need is a soft and clean surface to set the body on while working on the guitar. A poor man's version is a simple bath towel. But if you would like your player to feel, look, and work professionally, then one of these are a great option. There are many mats available, so I'll link the general search for the mats in the description. But I will also link to the Amazon overall pick, the Ernie Ball Instrument Maintenance Tech Mat. It's made of what looks like the same material mouse pads are made out of, which would be great for guitars as well. Personally, I'm drawn to the colors, but I do really like green. And this mat can be your gifties for $15. My next suggestion is a fret polishing kit. Frets are the little bars on the guitar that make notes happen properly. Well, these can get worn down and notches can be created in them that can affect playing negatively in a few ways. So this little set can help take those out and get your player's frets nice and shiny again. This comes with some metal strips that protect the wood around the frets while your player is polishing. These protectors actually have a slightly unique design that I haven't seen before yet. They have little hooks on the ends so they can be held with rubber bands so they're hands free. Most others come with handles that you have to hold while you're polishing with the other hand. It's not a big difference, but it can definitely help a beginner get the job done properly. While we're talking about maintaining the neck, I'll show you a closely related product. I was unaware, but apparently Music Nomad is an established company and they make a 4.8 star rated with over 7,000 reviews, fretboard conditioner and cleaner. Maple fretboards typically don't need this because they have a coating already on them. These are the kind with a light or saturated yellow necks on the top where the frets are. But laurel, or your average brown necks, are typically semi bare wood. I'm not for sure of the damages that can be caused by dried out necks, but to my knowledge, when a neck dries out, the frets can start to poke out the sides of the neck, which can make playing uncomfortable, or they can even start to cut up your hand as you play. And in some extreme circumstances, there can be damage to the neck, like cracking or something of that sort. But of course, most times, the only reasons I hear to clean the fretboard is to simply make it look better and keep it sanitary. Either way, better safe than sorry, and a bottle costs $9. Another option that's a little more affordable, has similar reviews, and should be able to accomplish the same thing is Diodario's Fretboard Conditioner and Cleaner. There are other options as well, but these seem to be the best available currently. Since we're making such good transitions, let's talk about another related product, but not as closely. This is a tool mainly for acoustic and hollow body guitars, specifically with the versions that we're going to look at. Guitars technically should be kept at an optimal humidity. That's why if you go into a music store, there's typically that little room with a bunch of acoustic guitars. Now for average people, this is an unreal expectation. Most of the times with electric guitars, it's not as big of a deal, especially with solid guitars. But with guitars that have wood exposed to the air, much like fretboards, the wood can start to dry out. Any guitars with sound holes are typically in danger of drying out. But a body drying out can be more serious than a neck. If your acoustic body starts to shift or change, then some serious damage can occur, whether it be to the structure of the inner bracings, or more rarely, visibly to the outside. So to prevent this, we have a simple tool called a guitar humidifier. The two that pop up immediately on my search are the two brands we just talked about in the last subject. Let's start with Diodario. They make this basic humidifier design that holds a sponge and vents the moisture to the guitar. I guess they make a couple versions, but I can't tell the difference between the upgraded one and the basic one other than the page says that the upgraded one can hold more water so it can last longer. But since they look the same to me, the price difference is quite shocking. The basic version is only $7, but the improved version is $20 normally and is currently on sale for $15. Either way, a pretty huge jump for what looks like the same design. So next we have an even more expensive humidifier but this one seems a little more worth it. This is a humidifier that you would buy for a more expensive guitar. This one is $30, but it has a digital screen on the lid that measures the humidity point and the temperature. So this is a tool to keep accurate readings to make sure that your guitar is hydrated and in a proper temperature. 
though the temperature doesn't help as much as the humidity because if you put your guitar through a bunch of fluctuating temperatures already, it's probably too late. As well as you can't see it, and these work the best when they're in the guitar cases. My dad had a beautiful, expensive Ovation guitar that he used for over 20 years. Its body cracked on the move from Wisconsin to Arizona because of being in so many cl different climates, driving a U-Haul from one side of the states to the other. So instrument climate control is not a myth, and it is something to be aware of. Another bonus suggestion I will make, but not go into too much depth about, is a cordless soldering iron. Soldering is a skill that can come in handy in a few situations as a guitarist and a cordless iron can save your player in a pinch situation. Personally, I put the Pine Sill cordless soldering iron on my list. This is an affordable option, but is mainly not available on Amazon. The main unit is available on Amazon, but with a fair upcharge, and the shipping says it will take a while. If you buy it from their site, you can get it for a better price and with some of the more affordable but also important add-ons though I also don't know how their shipping will compare to Amazon's, either in time or cost. So, even though this video is ending, it's technically not over. The next half of this video is about affordable guitar pedals, but the amount of time it took and the information that's all there, it can all stand as its own video. So, I'm, that's what I'm going to do is split these up. So. Be on the lookout for that video. Subscribe if you want to. I understand that a lot of you may not have use for subscribing to a channel like mine. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like. All I can say is stay tuned for the next video because guitar pedals are a very just great way to be able to make playing guitar a lot more fun. So, for now, I'm going to say bye bye